Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to our Platform Shooter Part 10. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to add a enemy spawner, an enemy spawner to the room. Let's get started. Create a new object and call this O spawner. Add an event. Step event. And the logic I want for my spawner is I want it to create enemies in waves. So it's going to check to see if there are no more enemies left in the room. If there are no more enemies left, it will create some new enemies. So let's do this. We'll say if if there's not an instance of O underscore enemy, then we know we can create some new enemies. And we need to have a wave variable, so let's add a create event. And we'll say, okay, we're on wave one. And if we see here, we'll do an underscore wave equals one. Now we can loop and create as many enemies we want based on the wave. So we could say if there's no enemies in the room, repeat wave instance create layer and we'll create them at the spawners x position the spawner's Y position, the layer we want to create them on, and object enemy. Then once we're done doing this, we'll just set wave plus equals one. So we'll add to our wave. And then obviously this code won't run anymore because some enemies will exist in the room. Let's make sure and get the correct uh, layer. We want to create it on the instances layer. So we'll come back into our spawner and we'll say our layer instances. We'll come into the room again, we can delete this enemy and we can create our spawner. So let's see how well this works. We'll put it right there so enemies can come in through the top. Okay, so it created an enemy. If we shoot it and kill it, we should get more enemies, but we're not seeing any more. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's the other one. So my guess is that outside the room where we can't see, the enemies are actually colliding with each other. And we don't really need that. So what we can do is we can come into our enemy here, into our soft collide, and we can make sure that the enemy is inside the room before we actually collide. So we can say if point in, in rectangle we'll, do, we'll actually just do yeah that should be fine. Tab all this in like that. Okay, so if the point is in the rectangle, and what rectangle do we want to check? Well, we want to check uh, 0, 0, room width, room height. Now, if you had a view, you'd want to make sure that you checked. Why am I, why am I getting an error here? I've got something. Oh, we need the point position. So we'll say X and Y. Okay, so this is the points position and then this is the rectangle. Now if we were, if we had a view that followed the player, then we'd want to make sure and use the X position of the view and the width and height of the view offset by the X position. 
to make sure we're checking the correct point. But this should work for our game since we don't have we don't have a moving view. You can see there we Now we've got two. Now we should have three. And okay, what is going on there? Now that's interesting. So what's actually happening here is our soft collision doesn't know what to do when the enemies are actually in the exact same position. So what it does, let's look at our soft collision here. It says our direction equals other x, other y, x, y. Well, the problem is this direction right here, if our x and y positions are equal to each other, if they're exactly equal to each other, this direction is going to be zero, which is to the right. So then it's going to push to the right, but both enemies are going to push to the right at the same speed. So then the next check, they're going to be in the same position again. And you saw what happened. They probably would have continued to go to the right forever if my player hadn't forced them into their attack state and then force them to stop moving basically so that's an interesting behavior and there's one way to fix it that I think works pretty well we can say if our x is equal to other x and our y is equal to other dot y then we can say this we can say x plus equals the sign of other dot id minus id. Now what this does is it just says, okay, if, if we're in the same position, how do we differentiate between us? Well, we can use our IDs. And we want to move just one pixel. We only really need to move one pixel so that we won't be in the same spot. So we're going to get the sign of the other ID minus our ID. So if their ID is bigger than ours, then this sign right here is going to return a this sign here is going to return a positive number because we're going to get their ID minus our ID and it's going to be positive. If their ID is smaller than our ID, then it's going to be negative. And hopefully this should fix that problem. Let's double check it. I want to test to make sure my... I've done this before in a similar, similar way, but I want to make sure my logic's good. Let's get rid of that. Okay. And there we go. They seem to move outside. They seem to move outside of each other quite well. See how it works with three. They kind of struggle coming in that, coming in the room with three and four. Here's five. And it works pretty well. That works pretty well. So we can use the X to differ or the IDs to differentiate and move them around a little bit. So that seems to work. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. It's going to be a little shorter because the day that I'm releasing this video, I'm actually going to be streaming. And I'm going to be streaming with a buddy of mine. I think Beyond Us Games is the name of his YouTube channel. We're going to be building a basic platformer using both Game Maker Studio and the Godot engine, so I'll be messing around in Godot. He'll be doing it in Game Maker Studio 2. We'll have a link that shows you, I'll put a link in the description to this video as well that will show, show both streams so you can watch them at the same time, kind of poke around. And I think that'll be a lot of fun. So thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.